Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans, where we have a special edition show today, folks. Well, we all know the NFL season is starting off, kicking off this Thursday. And, you know, we have our fantasy football draft right now, today, 1.30. We're nine minutes out, folks. So that's what we're going to do today on the show. We're just going to go and do our fantasy football draft. Talk about some players, just kind of get some nice thoughts that we're going to be having of who's going to be performing well this season, who we are going to probably avoid a little bit, uh, just our overall thoughts of the players this season. So we got eight minutes, 40 seconds before our draft tips off. Uh, but before we get into all of this, we do pick fifth. Our name is Tight End University, if you guys can see this. We're big on the tight ends, folks. I mean, how many times do we have to say it? We got the flag as our fantasy football name. Um, I don't do too many fantasy football. I'm not a big fantasy football guy. I will probably do one a year. Um, I don't enter like 10 and all that. Um, so I'm in this one right here, kind of... Um, yeah, not even really family. I know one person in this. I don't know these other people. I was uh, invited to this one by my uncle. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it big time. You know, he knows I got the show. So I got to kind of prove myself to these guys because they've been all drafting together, doing fantasy uh, for the last probably five, six, seven years. And I'm the new guy. So I definitely got to prove myself. So we're, we're planning on winning, obviously. Uh, we play to win the game, right? So, seven minutes left. We do, we got uh, pick number five. So, meh, right in the middle. So, we're always kind of, you know, middle every single round. Not the greatest. Uh, so, we'll see how it works out. Um, I'm kind of glad I'm not picking number one because I don't really want to pick Christian McCaffrey. But you kind of got to pick Christian McCaffrey. Um, I'm really looking for a Derrick Henry. And I may even, if Derrick Henry's not on the board, I'm taking our man Najee Harris for the Steelers first overall. Fifth pick. My first round pick. So, We'll see how it all shakes out, but before we get into this, before this starts, I do quickly want to talk about something quickly, because this just broke today, and it's definitely going to suck. So, it's, uh, here we go, Cowboys guard Zach Martin has tested positive for COVID-19, and he will not be able to play in the season opener. Truly, truly unfortunate. So, now the Cowboys starting offensive line is not going to be good for Thursday on the road against Tom Brady and that Bucks team. I mean... We haven't looked at the spread yet, but, I mean, this is definitely going to play like a point, a point and a half maybe um, in the favor of the Bucks. So, not good here, folks. Truly, truly not good. Um, you know, everything was going right for this Cowboys team in the offseason, in training camp, in the preseason games, and now they're starting to get hit with the COVID and just truly unfortunate that this is still going on this year. We saw some COVID um uh, positive COVID cases last season in the NFL that kept some star players from playing. I think uh, Lamar Jackson ended up with COVID and it couldn't play last season. So, you know, we're still in this COVID era and it is going to hinder and affect players. And um, I'm not sure if Zach Martin is um, vaccinated or not. It doesn't matter. He's still positive. So uh, it's like five days um, if you are vaccinated and 10 days. If you are not vaccinated, of how many days you kind of have to be in quarantine and away from the camp uh, and the team and all that. So really, really not great here for the Cowboys missing their starting guard, Zach Martin. So they're going to be getting a obliterated because we all know this Bucks defense is absolutely fantastic. So now we're talking about backups and we get this as well. The Cowboys will also be without backup offensive lineman Brandon Knight, who was ruled a close contact with Josh Ball and uh, who is also on the offensive line. He is on IR in right tackle. Lyle Collins is questionable. So this entire line, the backups, the starters, I mean, this is not good, especially with Dak Prescott. We know he's 100% healthy, but you don't want him running for his life week one. You don't want him getting kind of sacked over and over and hit over and over and over and over again week one. You don't want that to happen to any quarterback. Healthy, not half, not healthy, uh, coming off of an injury, not coming off, in, off of an injury. You don't want your star guy, your franchise guy, to get knocked and banged around week one. So, man, oh, man. Uh, you know, we're all looking forward to Thursday, obviously. But now, you know, COVID wants to come and ruin the party. Classic COVID, no? 
So that's really the main news from today, folks. Um, you know, really no stories come out on Sundays. And, uh, you know, this is a big one. This is a big, spicy meatball for this Cowboys team. And hopefully they can try and find a, a way around this. Hopefully Joe Philbin, the offensive line coach for the Cowboys, has a backup plan in place. Hopefully he's got his guys ready to rock because you are going to be facing the defending Super Bowl champions on the road. So you better hope everything's good because we know this Cowboys team is a little bit under the microscope. They've been making a lot of noise in the media because of hard knocks and just looking at the other teams in the NFC East, the Eagles, the Washington football team doesn't seem like they're that up to par with the Cowboys overall roster and talent wise then we have the Giants who kind of are on the same level talent and roster wise as the Cowboys are but they're planning on to getting out to slow starts Kenny Galladay hey you know I'm kind of you know getting back into the rhythm here he missed a couple of training camp days uh training camp practices Saquon Barkley still questionable for week one. What the hell is going on? So, you know, this Cowboys team that seemed to be like the best team in the NFC East coming into the season, well, they just got hit with the COVID. So truly unfortunate there. All right, let's uh, head back to our draft here. We are three minutes away from the start of it. Um, obviously going running back with our first round pick, probably running back with our second round pick as well. We're looking for some real good ones. And, uh, you know, if we can get Najee Harris, if we can get uh, Derrick Henry with our first pick, I'm all about it. Um, Christian McCaffrey is definitely not going to be there probably by number five. He's a nice dual threat. Running back, that's how he gets so many points, and that's why you really just have to take him number one because he rushes the ball and he catches the ball and he's coming off of an injury. And they've got Sam Darnold at the quarterback position, so you're definitely going to rely and lean heavily on Christian McCaffrey. Um, I would lead on Christian McCaffrey just talent-wise because I don't know if Sam Darnold's got it, but they're definitely going to be leaning on Christian McCaffrey because Sam Darnold is first-time quarterback for this Panthers team. Christian McCaffrey knows the offense, knows the team. He doesn't really know Matt Rule that well because last season he was injured, but I'm sure the man can kind of get acclimated and, you know, has always been a Panther his entire career. So I'm definitely expecting Christian McCaffrey to go first overall. We do pick number five. Derrick Henry is projected to kind of go number four, so we'll see how that uh, turns out. And, uh, you know, if we don't get Derrick Henry, I think I'm going for Najee Harris. I could potentially get Alvin Kamara, another kind of good dual threat running back who could be a real solid option because of kind of no more Drew Brees out there. So we kind of, you know, rely heavily on the running game. Jameis Winston, maybe a little bit of a dink and dunk to kind of start maybe a little bit, maybe feels himself a little bit midway into the season later in the season uh, but you know Alvin Kamara nice safety blanket out here so if Alvin Kamara is still on the board we potentially get him at number five um, definitely not, I'm not taking Dalvin Cook. I'm not taking Ezekiel Elliott. It, you know, they're good running backs but I'm definitely favoring Derrick Henry who's you know the rushing leader the last two seasons. We know what this man can do. So we're definitely going to try and take Derrick Henry if he's there. Then maybe Alvin Kamara. And then if both of those are gone, then we go out and get our man, Najee Harris, rookie. Let's see what they're projected. Let's see what they're projecting our man, Najee Harris. Are they going to disrespect him? Um, let's go to projected stats right here. And see how many points. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey is projected with the most with 575 points, obviously. Um, they're kind of doing Derrick Henry a little dirty, projecting him at 448 points when he just absolutely obliterated that with 526 fantasy points last season. So what are we doing? Uh, so let me look up our man Najee Harris here. All right, so they are going to have him projected at only 392 fantasy points. That's real light. I mean, what are y'all smoking over there? I mean, this man's definitely going to be the workhorse running back. He's going to get it done. So I think we might take a little bit of a leap of faith on Najee Harris. Um, I would like to try to get him in the second round, but he may not be there. We got 20 picks. Is he going to last 20 picks? Probably not. So here we go, the final 10 seconds. Woo! Wish us luck, folks. Folks, hopefully our players fall to us since we're not picking first and every, anything like that. So here we go, folks. The draft has officially started. A minute on the clock per draft. Hopefully everybody's on the ball. Hopefully everybody's on the mark. Um, so we're not waiting and hemming and hawing. Take your guys, my guy. So here we go, folks. Surprised that he's not instantly locking Christian McCaffrey. If Christian McCaffrey's at here at number five, I don't want to take him. I don't want to take him, but I may be forced to take him. So we'll see what happens. Dun, 
30 seconds into this pick. Come on, come on. Where are you at? Where are you at? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I also try to want to get, like, maybe Tyreek Hill a little early as well. What did he do last season? Okay, so first pick was Christian. Oh, no, he took Derrick Henry. No, he took Derrick Henry. Oh, my God, he took Derrick Henry. Wow, he must have been listening to us live. Damn, 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 he took Derrick Henry from us. I did not see that coming, but I definitely respect the hell out of that decision. I give that man props for taking that. Um, absolutely. Um, yeah, do kind of want to try and get Tyreek Hill a little early as well. Obviously, don't want to overreach for the man. Uh, we kind of have him classified as the number one wide receiver in this league. So, definitely want to try and get him as well. I'm going to try and stay away from getting any Colts running backs. Jonathan Taylor, Marlon Mack, Naheem Hines. Just because I do think it's going to be a little bit of running back by committee. And that number two overall pick goes to Christian McCaffrey. And yeah, it's definitely got to be. Uh, definitely upset they went with Derrick Henry number one. Damn, I really was hoping he would fall to us. Oh, uh, y'all know we love Derrick Henry, obviously, he's made one of the three coveted spots on our canvas wall. Saquon Barkley is another option, but we have to be cautious with Saquon Barkley because... You know, he may not be ready to go week one. And now we have Delvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott off the board. And uh, so now do we do Alvin Kamara? There's also Nick Chubb on the board who's not a bad option right here. The only bad thing with Nick Chubb is that, you know, it's running back by committee with him and Kareem Hunt. So we're kind of splitting hairs there, uh, kind of cannibalizing our own fantasy by getting Nick Chubb because he's going to be splitting. So... I'm going to I'm going to go a little crazy right here. I think I'm taking Najee Harris, folks. I truly believe in this man. I truly truly do. Alvin Kamara is a great pick. Uh, do we risk it though? I really want Najee Harris on my team, folks, but Alvin Kamara, ooh, ooh. Uh, Alvin Kamara is not dropping out at number 20. Najee Harris may not be there. I'm going to go with my gut, folks. I trust this man. He will get it done. Najee Harris. Welcome to Takes by Fans Fantasy League. Here we go. Bingo, bango. Najee Harris all locked and loaded with us. Oof. I feel good about it, though. I feel confident in the man. He's the only running back for the Steelers there. He's going to get his burn. We know this. So, and, you know, we know... Uh, Ben Roethlisberger is going to fall off at the end of the season with that throwing arm, getting a little bit of a wet noodle as the season progresses. Starts as a dry noodle, firm dry noodle, and then midway it starts to get a little moisture, starts to get a little bend in there, and then it's all floppy because it's absolute soaked in water. And there's Alvin Kamara getting taken number six, and obviously that was going to happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, the playoffs, hey, you know, Najee Harris is going to get a lot of attention when it comes playoff time. So, got to lock in that value while we had the chance. And uh, we're not going to second guess and we're going to take Najee Harris. Alrighty, now that we've got our first pick, we've got a couple of picks here to kind of decide what we want to do with our second pick overall. Probably going to do another running back. That's where most of the fantasy points come from. We get Austin Eckler, a seventh round pick here. I think that's a real great thing as well. We are big believers in Austin Eckler. Uh, he kind of flies under the radar a lot. I want to bring up, um, can, I, can I look him up here? Can I click on this man? Um, Alright, I want to get up Austin Eckler stats because that's a real solid pick right there. Um... Kind of a dual threat, obviously not as good as a as a good dual threat as Alvin Kamara or Christian McCaffrey, honestly, but still a real solid option right here, especially with you know the Chargers with Justin Herbert going into a second year. Austin Eckler only ran for 530 yards last season, and he had another 400 yards receiving, so he's getting to that kind of thousand yard mark every single season between the run and the pass. So a real solid option there. Then we have Aaron Jones going number eighth overall, and yeah, I mean you know the kind of back or the kind of support for Aaron Rodgers he definitely got it done last season absolutely fantastic Nick Chubb is definitely who we're going to be having our eyes on running back wise I don't think he falls down like I said I want to stay away from Jonathan Taylor Saquon Barkley is a little bit of a wild card because we've been hearing such little information about him and look at this we get Travis Kelsey a tight end going in the first round whoa people have been bringing out their big brain IQs I love it out here absolutely steal right there Travis Kelsey obviously he gets it done I mean he was the leading receiver for the Chiefs last season at 
at the tight end position. How can you not get that man? He will bring you the points. Then we get Devontae Adams. Nick Chubb with, with number 10. Then we have Devontae Adams going number 11. People are already taking the wide receivers and pass catchers off of the board. Got to give them some credit there. Number 12 goes to Jonathan Taylor. I think that's a little mistake right there because they do have that loaded backfield. So it's going to be kind of splitting carries a little bit. All right, so what else are we looking for here? We're in the second round now. Any other running back? Saquon Barkley. What else do we got? Antonio Gibson with Washington. I can't take that. Calvin Ridley's up here. I um, mean, just proje projected stats and all that. Joe Mixon, we got a running back. Any other running backs? Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. What's this questionable about? Can I look up that questionable? Interesting. All right, any other running backs that we may be able to buy into quickly? Hmm, hmm. I also want to try and get Darren Waller. Obviously, don't want to overreach for that man, but we have uh, Stephon Diggs going 13. We have Calvin Ridley going 14. We have Tyreek Hill going 15. Damn, what we wanted right there. We wanted both Calvin Ridley and Tyreek Hill, and we're not getting either of them. Um, all right, so Saquon Barkley is still on the board, and if he is still on the board, we may have to take a shot at him. Um, yeah, it may kind of hurt us week one, but overall, we are relying and expecting Saquon Barkley to return to prime form. So we're betting on Saquon Barkley this season, and... And if he's still here and four more picks, we'll, we'll swallow him up. If we have to go week one, two, or three without him, we can try to make it work. But we're trying to, you know, win the playoffs. We definitely think he'll be ready to go by week. I think our playoffs start 14, 15, 16. Um, so Saquon Barkley will definitely be ready to rock by then. Don't want to go with Antonio Gibson here. DeAndre Hopkins is a solid choice, and Saquon Barkley goes 17th. Absolutely got to pick up that man. All right, let's go to running backs. I want to see if we can get another solid running back here and then go with wide receivers in round number three. But the running backs that we have left are Antonio Gibson, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, Chris Carson with Seattle. Now, that's a real solid option right there. We may go with Chris Carson. We got David Montgomery. We got James Robinson, DeAndre Swift, Josh Jacobs. Oh, we're going to go with Josh. Oh, but there's running back by committee there with Lamar Miller now. Ooh, real interesting. Let's see what his stats were in 2020 because I know he broke 1,000 yards rushing. He had 355 fantasy points. Gus Edwards for Baltimore. Uh, we had uh, David Montgomery just go 18th, so we're one pick away. Hopefully they don't go with Josh Jacobs, and they go with Antonio Gibson. Absolutely love it. So now we are on the clock. We can pick up Josh Jacobs if we can. Uh, Miles Sanders, Gus Edwards for Baltimore. Anything else? Kareem Hunt. That's a steal that we may look for a little bit later, potentially round four, maybe even five. Miles Gaskin could make a big splash for Miami. A little bit too much of a gamble to go, though. If I'm going to spend a second-round pick, I want some short value right here. And I think that's where we're going to go with Josh Jacobs. One last, one last close look here. we got 30 seconds left before we have to make our pick. Sony Michelle, real interesting there for the Rams. James Conner. What else we got? Devin Singletary. Kenyon Drake, another real solid option. He had another 310 fantasy points. Give that man some respect, Kenyon Drake. Uh, but we are going to go with Josh Jacobs here. Maybe not the best pick because of the Lamar Miller, but we're going to take Josh Jacobs here and join our team. All right, so now we have our starting running backs. Najee Harris and Josh Jacobs. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire goes 21. All righty, all righty. All righty, so we're going to kind of... We're going to chill on the running backs now, and let's start looking for wide receivers. We may take a quarterback at number four. All right, so wide receivers left. We got DK Metcalf, DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson. He had 215 fantasy points. Ex expect that man to really explode this season as well. We get Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb. We're betting on C.D. Lamb big, big, big time. Dax back. Expect C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper to have both big seasons. C.D. Lamb has just been looking absolutely phenomenal here in training camp. And then we just had DK Metcalf get drafted 22nd overall. But C.D. Lamb, we are big, big, big believers in this season. Going into a second season, correct? This is second season, right? Not third? Let's make, I want to make sure he's taking this kind of year two leap because he, we, we've, we see him on hard knocks, folks. He's looking absolutely fantastic. Yeah, C.D. Lamb going into his second season here. 
All right, who else do we have? All right, we had DeAndre Hopkins getting selected 23rd overall. And the good thing about CeeDee Lamb is that, you know, he's you know he's still the number two wide receiver on that team. So that great uh, elite talent and athleticism and catchability that he has, it's going to be going against their second corner because, you know, the number one corner is going to have to be on Amari Cooper. So we may be able to get some great value out of CeeDee Lamb this season after coming off a real solid first rookie year. So I think we're going to be looking at um, CeeDee Lamb Lambs here. Now, Justin Jefferson's a real solid option as well, but Justin Jefferson has made himself number one wide receiver on that Vikings team. It's not Adam Thielen anymore. I'm giving Justin Jefferson that number one overall kind of slot at the wide receiver position for them. So, Justin Jefferson going to get locked up by that number one. I think we can get great value. And look at this. Patrick Mahomes, the first quarterback off the board, 24th overall. Yeah, I mean, why not? The run, the pass, you know the man's going to get it done. Ax, you know, Excellent pass catchers. Uh, he's got a great tight end, so another safety blanket route for a kind of Patrick Mahomes to go to. So, you know, getting a quarterback with great tight ends like a Derek Carr with Darren Waller. Um, who else has got great tight ends? Jimmy Garoppolo with George Kittle, Matt Ryan with um, Kyle Pitts, you know, so look for that. We're going to probably look for that when it's definitely going to play into our mind when we do pick our quarterback if they have a real great safety blanket tight end. And we may even, t oh, and look at that, Darren Waller, as soon as we're talking, Darren Waller gets taken right off the board. Great pick right there as well. So the top two kind of tight ends in the league have already been taken off the board. Ooh, Darren Waller. Travis Kelsey, but we have our kind of ace up our sleeve with Kyle Pitts that we may try and go for potentially next round if we can survive round four. George Kittle goes. They're taking tight ends. They're taking all the tight ends from tight end university. I'm proud. I'm proud that everybody's everybody's listening to us. I'm listening to the show daily because we do put so much stock into the tight ends. And how are we going to name ourselves tight end universities? And we're not going to get one of these elite tight ends. Damn it. They're playing us out here. Jeez. All right, we had Josh Allen. Wow, Josh Allen gets taken off the board, and I give that respect. Gosh dang. We know Josh Allen is absolutely fantastic. That year three leap, we brag about it. We gush about it all the time, and we're expecting big things out of Josh Allen. Now, this is kind of, kind of has us uh, you know, rethinking our picks. Maybe we should – are we overreaching on CD Lamb? Chris Carson goes 28th. Do you pick Chris Carson 28th? Real interesting. I don't know if I like that pick. Um, all right, so now we are on the clock. We have to make our pick. Do we go with CD Lamb? We are – big believers in this man this season ugh, ugh. Justin Jefferson we love him but he's the number one option on that team Keenan Allen with the Chargers great option number one option he's got Justin Herbert's really gonna make a splash this season Terry McLaurin with you know Ryan Fitzpatrick airing out the balls definitely another great option but I think we're gonna s pick CD Lamb right here and see what we do at round number four. Probably try and maybe get a tight end. Everybody's all over the board here. So it's like we can't get a, the best quarterback anymore. We can't get the best tight end. We can't get the best wide receivers anymore. But I think CeeDee Lamb's a really good, solid option. And we're going to take this man. CeeDee Lamb, welcome to the Takes by Fans fantasy team, baby. Alrighty, so now we have a lot more time. We have uh, Daryl Henderson with the Rams getting taken, and yeah, why not? But we know Daryl Henderson wasn't their first original choice, so we don't believe that he's going to be up to snuff. And now with them trading for Sony Michelle, kind of running back by committee, we don't love that pick overall. All right, but now let's start working on our next pick here. Let's go to May. Do we have to get a tight? Uh, do we have to get a quarterback? We may be able to get a tight end at round number four and then we don't have that many picks we have one two three four five six seven eight picks eight picks between our fourth round pick and our fifth round pick so we may be able to get a great tight end and a good quarterback because some are starting to fly off the board with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen we have Allen Robinson being taken 31st overall and that's a real solid pick right there Allen Robinson was making Mitch Trubisky look good now he's got Andy Dalton and Justin Fields so you know he's definitely going to be able to make them work because Mitch Trubisky unfortunately I think is the worst out of that kind of three quarterbacks that we just named right there. A.J. Brown being taken by um, number 32 overall here. A.J. Brown, which, once again, I don't know if that's a great pick because you have Julio Jones, because you have Derrick Henry in the backfield. So, and then you got Ryan Tannehill, who can run it himself. So, I don't know about taking somebody on the Titans, but that's what they go with. Number 33rd overall goes to James Robinson, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, you know, without Travis Etienne, James Robinson is the next man up there. But, you know, we don't think that offense is going to be that good. So we're kind of staying away from the Jack Jacksonville Jaguars players as well. All right. Let's see what tight ends are left. Kyle Pitts right here. 
What is he projected? 181 fantasy points. We got Mark Andrews. I mean, and if we don't take Kyle Pitts, this is what we're going to be left with, folks. Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson, Logan Thomas, Tyler Higby. Now, we may go after Tyler Higby if he's still up there, if Kyle Pitts is not there. Uh, who else do we got? We got um, Robert Tanyan for the Packers, another solid option. Noah Fant, Dallas Goddard. Watch out for Mike Kosicki. This is a real great late round, maybe seventh, eighth, last round. Watch out for Mike Kosicki. He's going to get some solid production here with Tua this season and a nice safety blanket for Tua going into year two. I think that's a real great option. Not quite yet, but if you haven't drafted yet in fantasy and want some late, 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 last second advice, watch out for Mike Kosicki late in your draft rounds. So I really think we're going to have to try and get Kyle Pitts right off the rip here in round number four and then get our quarterback in round number five and then go from there for six and, you know, for the rest of the time. We get Justin Jefferson being taken 35th overall. Absolutely solid choice right there. All right, last pick of round number three. Who will be the man? And then we only have a couple more. We're crossing our fingers. No Kyle Pitts. Hopefully nobody knows about the man. You know, he, he it's not like he went fourth overall in this year's draft and it's big time, right? Come on. Hopefully he sneaks under the radar here. And also, hopefully they can't hear us. We don't even know. Maybe they can hear us. I don't know. Um, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if they got voice chat in here, and if they do, they got all my secrets. So congratulations. Y'all got the inside look of our war room here. Congrats. <laughs> All right, Justin Jefferson. What else we get? <clears throat> so far, not bad. We got CeeDee Lamb, Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs. I'm, I'm a big believer in all these players, folks, truly. So, <clears throat> a little unfortunate we couldn't get Derrick Henry. That one's definitely going to hurt me a little bit. But everybody else, I'm not really upset that we lost. All right, he goes with Keenan Allen. So, two wide receivers by uh, in the last two picks there. Justin Jefferson and Keenan Allen. All righty. So, the start of round number four right here. We have seven picks until our turn. Seven more. No Kyle Pitts. Crossing our fingers big time right here. All right, since we're kind of planning two picks ahead, let's just, because, you know, we do still want to fill up our wide receiver. So, you know, all these other good wide receivers may be taken off the board by the time we get our kind of last wide receiver because we are going to want to shore that up in round number six. So we take a tight end round number four. We take a quarterback round number five. And then round six, we're back at the wide receivers to finish off two good ones right there. So we're probably not going to, well, we wouldn't even take Amari Cooper because we're not going to kind of get both of those on the t same team. But we're not going to get Mike. Evans we're not going to get Terry McLaurin we're not going to get Chris Godwin so we got to scroll down a little bit who are we all right in taking like a T Higgins for Cincinnati a nice tall option out there for Joe Burrow coming off the injury and as we just said that yeah Mike Evans gets taken off the board at that wide receiver position Jerry Judy oh if we can snag up Jerry Judy that could be absolutely fantastic as well it's going to be a while before we can choose him and Kyle Kyle Murray is the next player taken off the board right there but I want to secure Kyle Pitts. I want to secure great value at the tight end position. Now that Darren Waller and George Kittle and Travis Kelsey are all taken off the board, I got to get Kyle Pitts now. All right, but if we can snag Jerry Judy round number six, that's going to be fantastic. Terry McLaurin was just taken. We got four more picks here. Crossing our fingers, absolutely fantastic. We're going to stay away from Jamar Chase. All of his struggles there at the wide receiver position in freaking preseason. What the hell is that about? Dropping passes, wide open, five-yard slam passes, just dropping them. The man is timid, folks. The man is like, oh, my God, this is the NFL. I knew I was going to the league, but, geez, I didn't know it was like this. You know, some people flounder. Some some people rise, and so far, Jamar Chase is floundering a little bit out here, so there's no way we can believe in this man. He may have a great season, but so far of what we've been seeing, we cannot bet on this man by drafting this man. We get Amari Cooper going 40th, but we got CeeDee Lamb. He's going to have a better season than Amari Cooper, so we beat you there. You can have our, <laughs> our sloppy side. No! No! Kyle Pitts! No! We were three picks away! They go with Kyle Pitts! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Ugh, ugh, oh, this. Now what do we do? Do we have to prioritize a quarterback now? Because 
I'm not going to prioritize these last remaining tight ends right here. Lamar Jackson just gets taken off the board. We got to get a quarterback right here. What's left? Dak Prescott. Chris Godwin was the last person just drafted here. We're on the clock. We got Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts, Ryan Tannehill, Matthew Stafford. Ooh, ooh, do we go with Matt Stafford? I mean, folks, this is going to be his big time season. He's finally got a competent organization. Organization, a competent head coach, competent playmakers all around him. Matthew Stafford, expect this man to go 1 million percent. We may pick this man up. Who else do we got? We got 30 seconds. We got Joe Burrow, Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Trevor Lawrence, Baker Mayfield, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Ben B, Tua, Danny J, Derek Carr. Derek Carr is a real solid option as well, but I think I'm going to go with Matthew Stafford. Let's see what he can do. Finally on a great team. Expect some big top off here. Matthew Stafford, welcome to the Takes by Fans fantasy team, folks. All righty. Now, wide receiver, do we go and shore that up? We had Russell Wilson just taken right after us, 45th overall here. So we got our quarterback. Now, man, oh, man, these tight ends, man. Oh, they stole him from me. They stole him from me. I'm, I'm heartbroken on that. Truly, truly heartbroken on that, folks. I may prioritize wide receiver now in round number five. Is there any good ones here? We just had Gus Edwards taken off the board. Who else do we got here wide receiver wise? Cooper Cup, Tyler Lockett, Robert Woods, DJ Moore, Julio Jones, Brandon Ayuk, Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, T. Higgins, Chase Claypool, Jerry Judy. Do we go get Der Jerry Judy, folks? Uh, Miles Sanders just taken off the board, 47th overall. Robbie Anderson, OBJ, Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase, Cortland Sutton, Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown, Debo Samuel, Kenny Galladay. He's the one expecting a slow start, so we're not going to get that man. Corey Davis is a real solid option out here just because we know that that is Zach Wilson's A1 Tier 1 choice, folks. He was throwing to him time and time and time and time and time and time again in preseason. That's basically all he went to. 50% of his throwing attempts were all to Corey Davis, so we should be able to expect his stats this season to be absolutely fantastic that is some great value here all right let's go back to the tight ends since they have been kind of flying off the board let's re-see what we have here mark andrews he did have 203 fantasy points how many yards did mark andrews have last season let's get that up quickly i don't think he was a thousand yard receiver 500 700 oh god okay okay Ugh, ugh, ugh. Adam Thielen was just taken. 48th overall. We have four picks. Do we go tight end? Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson for Detroit. I mean, Detroit, a tight end there should be serviceable just because their overall team should be lackluster. Jared Goff, a nice safety blanket for him going to TJ Hawkinson. Logan Thomas, Tyler Higby for the Rams. He had 800 yards. TJ Hawkinson broke 1,000 yards last season. Mark Andrews, hang on. All right, and these are projected stats. I was about to say. Um, so Mark Andrews had the most stats left remaining. Nobody else with 1,000 yards. How unfortunate. Can the man get 1,000 yards? Mark Andrews, is he going to get that many looks from Lamar Jackson this season now that they want to go a little bit more vertical? Mark Andrews did go to tight end university. Let's get that up quickly. I want to make sure we're not choosing tight ends that did not go to tight end university, folks. That is absolutely the case. If you're not learning from the best, you're not going to be playing like the best out here. We just had Leonard Fournette go 49th and DeAndre Swift go number 50. We got two picks until we got a pick. But let's quickly take a double check here that Mark Andrews was it yes it here he was mark andrews going to tight end university so learning from the best we may be able to find some great value in him we got two picks let's see t higgins takes 51 and then cooper cup goes 52 we're gonna we got uh two good solid options that we can believe big time in at wide receiver that we will shore up in round number six but we are gonna take mark andrews here round number five just to make sure that we get a good solid tight end right here we need it we need 
need a good, solid pass-catching tight end. And we can believe with Mark Andrews, since they've got great playmakers all over the field. Lamar Jackson, nice dual threat. He gets in trouble, dumps it off to Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews went to T, uh, tight end university. Why we're going to stay away from TJ Hawkinson, who did have more receiving yards last season than Mark Andrews, is because he's on the lines. We can't buy into that team overall. So we're going to go with Mark Andrews here. All right, now there's two wide receivers that we want to shore up with. We are going to believe in Jerry Judy, and we are also going to believe in Corey Davis here. So we've got 14 picks, and we've got two wide receivers that we are keeping our eyes on, hopefully that we can get. Deontay, jo Deontay Johnson goes 54th overall. That's fine. We don't care. Um, you know, Deontay Johnson's fine. We like the guy, but that's not who we have our so eyes set on. The good thing about this, I mean, there's some big names at wide receiver here that, you know, people may overlook, you know, Jerry Judy and Corey Davis. So we may be able to kind of luck out and not have them stolen from us like Kyle Pitts was. I may have to try and, you know, request a trade because we got to get Kyle Pitts on our team at some point this year. Well, this isn't good. Jerry Judy goes 55th overall. This is not good. And now we only got really one that we're relying on with 11 picks to go. They go Robert Woods, 56th overall. All right, let's maybe look for a backup here if, uh, you know, our man, I don't even want to say his name out loud because every time we say the, our people's name, they're getting taken. We get Dak Prescott going 57th overall. All right, so this is the wide receivers remaining. We got Tyler Lockett, DJ Moore, Julio Jones. I want to stay away from Julio Jones. They already have A.J. Brown. You already have, you know, uh, Derrick Henry. So Julio Jones could still be good, battling some hamstring injuries. Hopefully he's all good. But some big questions on Julio Jones and some just other great players on this team where he's not going to be kind of the hands-down A1 Tier 1 choice of the team overall. We get Brandon Ayuk. We get Chase Claypool, Robbie Anderson. Now, that could be decent as well. Um, Sam Darnold going with, you know, Robbie Anderson. They have familiarity with each other. We'll see if he utilizes them a lot. We have Justin Herbert going 58th overall, and I love that Justin Herbert's kind of getting high priority here in the quarterback selection. Absolutely love that. We are big, big, big time on Justin Herbert, and we are expecting big things out of that man. Hopefully, he can get it done this season. Solid pick there at number 58th overall. All righty. Then we go Javante Williams. Ooh, running back for Denver. Real interesting. We know Denver's going to have a running back by committee. They're kind of utilizing three running backs there. Um, I'm forgetting who the third is. He's kind of a no-name. Javante Williams, I'm almost 100% certain he is a backup here. Well, I guess we can bring up the Broncos jump chart. We got to some time here. Uh, we kind of know who we want to go with wide receivers. If he doesn't get, get stolen underneath our freaking nose. Um yeah, but we have heard from the Broncos that they are going to be using kind of a three running back approach here. So we are definitely staying away from Javante Williams, uh, Melvin Gordon, and uh, Nate McCrary. They kind of want him as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know about that pick right there, 59th overall. That's a little bit of a reach. Alrighty, last pick in round number five. We are eight picks until we pick for round number six here. Then we have Robbie Anderson going number 60. That was kind of our new backup plan, so okay. All right, who else do we got? OBJ coming off of an injury. Really great talent around him. Two great running backs. You know, we know that Baker Mayfield, uh, Kevin Stefanski is not going to be kind of overthrowing the ball. He's going to tailor make the offense, and he knows what Baker Mayfield can handle. So we are going to stay away from OBJ and a lot of people on this Browns team overall. Uh, Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase, like we said, we're going to stay away from. Cortland Sutton could be a real solid option coming off the injury from last season. But with Jerry Judy, he might be able to get open himself still. So that could be another solid option right there. We have Mike Davis, um, and that's interesting as well. He is kind of the premier back for that Falcons team, so not bad. Chase Edmonds going uh, 62nd overall, running back for the Cardinals. Now they're flying off the board. Raheem Mostar going 63rd overall. Solid options. We get Trey Sermon going 64th overall. A lot of running backs coming off the board here in round number six. That is fine because we don't have our eyes set on them. All right, what else we get here? We are three picks away. Hopefully nobody scrolls down. Hopefully nobody scrolls down this list and sees, oh, our man. We're not even going to say it. Um, because if he goes down, hmm, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to find somebody of that caliber. 
Then we get OBJ getting taken 65th. A real interesting choice. And Melvin Gordon, 66th overall. All righty. One more pick. Don't take our man. Don't take our man like y'all took Kyle Pitts from us. One more pick. Who does he go to? He chooses Tyler Lockie. He went went after wide receiver. He didn't choose the right one. So finally, Corey Davis falls to us. Now we have a minute left. Is this the right decision? The kind of players above Corey Davis that they just have on this list are DJ Moore, Julio Jones, Brandon Ayuk, Chase Claypool, Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase, Cortland Sutton, Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown, Debo Samuel, Kenny Galladay, and Corey Davis. I think Corey Davis has the most upside. He should be facing the most production. Zach Wilson, everybody's saying he's looking great. He's got kind of the best preseason stats. Completion percentage was good. Throwing the ball, com showing command of the offense overall. So we can believe and buy into kind of Zach Wilson being serviceable at minimum this season. And Corey Davis is his A1 Tier 1 wide receiver. We're going Corey Davis, folks. New York Giants wide receiver. Zach Wilson's favorite target. Corey Davis, welcome to the Takes by Fans Fantasy Draft. All righty. Now we have our starting wide receiver or our starting quarterback, our two starting wide receivers. We have DJ Moore getting taken 69th and we have our two starting running backs and we have our starting tight end. So now we can start kind of going a little bit more in our depth chart, maybe start kind of taking some good risks and maybe a little bit of overreaches on who we believe can show out and shine some sleeper underdogs that we want on our bench. And if they show out, we put them right in the starting lineup. We have Julio Jones getting taken 71st overall. So let's see all players remaining and let's see if there's any good names that we can kind of believe in this season. Kareem Hunt. Oh, that's going to be our next pick. 100%. He's got great value. He rushed, I think, for like 900 yards last season. Kareem Hunt, 841, and we know this man's big-time explosive. It's thunder and lightning back there in the backfield. They both can get it done. This is a solid serviceable bet here. We had Kenny and Drake getting taken 72nd overall. Once again, kind of the same situation there with the Raiders. Josh Jacobs is the main man with the Raiders. Uh, Nick Chubb is the main man with the Browns, but their backups, Kareem Hunt, Kenny and Drake for the Raiders, Kareem Hunt for the Browns, are both very, very good options right here. I think I like Kareem Hunt a little bit better than Kenyon Drake. Kareem Hunt's got that take the top off the speed, and we can definitely do that. We can definitely take that here. Uh, that definitely fits us. Uh, we have Chase Claypool going 73rd overall. We are three picks away from our pick. Oh, and then they pick Kareem Hunt. Damn, 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 damn. Okay, now we're in big time trouble because we don't even know who the heck to go to. We can potentially pick up Miles Gaskin. He is going to be the main man here for the, the uh, for this Dolphins team running back-wise this, uh, this year. Um... Oh, I want the Dolphins depth chart. Dolphins depth chart. Let's get this up quickly. We're running out of time here. Somebody was just picked. What do we got? Nope, nope, nope. Still Cream Hunt. Okay. So Miami Dolphins depth, depth chart going with Miles Gaskin. Then we got Malcolm Brown. So it's like we've got nothing great here. So expect Miles Gaskin to truly get it done. We have Debo Samuel going 75th overall. So let's just kind of focus on the running back. I think that's kind of where I want to take it this round. Uh, we got Miles Gaskin, A.J. Dillon, Sony Michelle, James Conner, Zach Moss, Jamal Williams, and Brandon Ayuk was just taken. So that's perfect because all these other running backs are kind of the second string. Miles Gaskin's like the last remaining starter out here. So I think we just have to go with him, but we got 50 seconds. Let's keep going here. Zach Moss of Buffalo, Jamal Williams of Detroit, Devin Singletary of Buffalo, and that's another starting option right there. Solid pick. Uh, Michael Carter for the Jets. We already got Corey Davis. and I don't know if I want to go with Michael Carter. We get Neham Hines. He's the third rotation there for the Colts. Can't take that. We get David Johnson. Houston, can we rely on him? I don't know if I want to pick anybody on Houston. Uh, we got Tony Pollard, Philip Lindsay of Houston as well. Real solid running back. We're big believers in Philip Lindsay. He's not the starter. And like we said, can't really buy anybody in Houston. What else do we get here? James White, J.D. McKissick, Giovanni Bernard, Carlos Hyde, Tevin Coleman, Rashad Penny, Ramondre Stevenson. But that's w getting way ahead of ourselves. We can't. We will take Ramondre Stevenson at some point. Can't do it right now. Miles Gaskin. Got to go with him. He's a starting running back in this league. Got to take him. Miles Gaskin. Welcome to the Takes by Fans Fantasy roster. All righty. Now we have mad time before our next pick. We are 13 picks. Aaron Rodgers gets taken. Got to take it. His fuck it season. So expect him to do big things. That's a real solid pick here being taken 78th. Real solid pickup right there. He will let it loose. He will let it fly. No, no doubt at all. All righty. 
All righty. Now who are we in the hunt for? Now we just got to kind of take best player overall. Best player overall now. Maybe one more wide receiver to shore it up. I'm really loving... Tyler Higby at the tight end position here for the Rams. We may be able to scoop him up. We have Austin Hooper going 79th, and we have Tom Brady going 80th. Uh, Tyler Higby, I want to bring up his stats because this man, I believe, is... Um I want to say he's like 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, folks, and that's exactly what we look for, folks, and great tight ends. So Tyler Higby, 6'6", six, six out here, absolutely monster, uh, going into his sixth season here. Oh, and his best season was only 700 receiving yards. He had only 500 last season, so that's why we have a little bit of a, a, you know, a, little bit of a question mark on him. We believe this man could truly be an A1, Tier 1, 1,000-yard uh, tight end in this league. Uh, we also do have Matthew Stafford, so double up on that sometimes as well. Is that the best decision? I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's a good strategy. Uh, but let's just quickly take a look. Was Taylor, Tyler, Ty, Ty, Tyler Higby, was he part of tight end university? Because like we said, we are only taking tight ends that went to tight end university. And here we go, Tyler Higby. In 6'6 option, I mean, did Matthew Stafford ever have a 6'6 option? I know he had a Calvin Johnson with E66. He was up there, 6'4". Um, all right, number 81 overall, we get LaVisca Chenault Jr., wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we are not taking anybody on that Jaguars team. You must be out your mind. Uh, Brandon Cooks going 82nd from the Houston Texans, wide receiver, and that's a solid option as well. Um, I mean, this Houston team has some solid players on it. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, serviceable quarterback, but, you know, first-time head coach here or a new head coach for this Texans team. The management was trash overall, and, you know, they've got this big elephant in the room with Deshaun Watson, so I just would kind of stay away from them. Oh, look at this. Great pickup right here. 83rd overall, Devontae. Smith, yeah, why not take a risk on this rookie who's going to be kind of the best wide receiver on this Eagles team? Real great pickup right there, absolutely. We get Robert Tanya in 84th overall, another great tight end right there. Baker Mayfield, quarterback select, uh, taken for 85th overall. Now we are officially in round number seven. Are we in round number seven now? Round eight. Oh, geez. Did I have a seventh round pick? They skipped my seventh round pick? <laughs> I got seven players here? Okay, okay. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, tight end, taking 86 overall. So I think I am going to try and take Tyler Higby out here and expect him to kind of have a real great season coming off the tight end university. So I think that's where we're going to go here. We only have two wide receivers, but we can put them in the flex spot. Ah. Uh. Tyler Higby. He's on the main kind of list here. All players results. Tyler Higby's kind of, um, you know, fifth overall here, just in terms of how they order them. So, ugh. he's on the board. Everybody sees him. Everybody sees him. It's not a scroller where he gets lost in the shuffle. So, hopefully, that doesn't bite us in the butt. Probably get a wide receiver in round number nine. We only have to kind of wait eight picks between round number eight and round number nine. So we should be able to kind of get some valuable picks here at the wide receiver position. And then once we get to round number kind of 10, maybe be the first team to take a defense or get another quarterback or just shore up our just overall roster off the bench. All righty. We have Juju Smith-Schuster getting taken 88th overall. Three picks until our turn, and we're looking at a man right here. We're looking at a man right here. We don't want to say the name. Can't give it away. We saw what happens when we do that. They steal him right from under us. We hate that. Why are you taking Why are you listening in? Why are you in our green room, in our war room? Who's got bugs? Who bugged our plays? Jeez. Uh, Cortland Sutton getting taken 89th overall. Real solid pick right there. That's an absolute surefire solid production out there. Alrighty, two picks until we can try and take our man. Sony Michelle's a real option, a real interesting option. We have Mike Williams getting taken 90th overall for a wide receiver for the Chargers. One more pick before we pick, and they take Logan Thomas tight end. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we are going to solidify our pick in Tyler Higby, a nice big target for Matthew Stafford, and a nice little safety blanket check down. Oh, you know, oh, the wide receivers are taken. Oh, they're covered, but I can dump it off to the tight end that's taking a five-yard route over the middle of the field or a five-yard slant, or maybe he's taking it deep because 6'6 six, six and learn from tight end university how to run a route how to run a deep route a deep pose get it done so we're gonna go with tight end number two here tyler higby welcome to the takes by fans fantasy roster my man 
Alrighty, now let's try to shore up our wide receiver depth here a little bit. What do we have left? Tyler Boyd, uh, 841 yards last season. Noah Fant going 93rd overall. Real solid tight end choice right there. Big believers, big buyers into Noah Fant. And once again, went to tight end university. Um, Tyler Boyd, I want to say he's like 6'5". I want to say this man is big time, big time. Um, and like we said, I would like to get kind of a Bengals player out here at some point. Joe Burrow, um, you know, year number two coming off the injury. Tyler Boyd's only 6'2". I thought he was a little bit taller than that. Uh, multiple 1,000-yard receiving seasons going into his sixth season, 2,000 yard, uh, two 1,000-yard seasons, and he had 841 last season. So this could be another good pickup for us. May go with Tyler Boyd right here um, at the wide receiver position. What else we get? Jamar Chase. Like we said, we're not taking that. Antonio Brown, and that's another solid option right there. We have been seeing uh, Antonio Brown kind of look right, real good in preseason. He, um, everything we've been hearing, Tom Brady says he's, hey, he's looking great. Antonio Brown says, hey, I'm looking great. Mike Evans is like, hey, this dude is looking great. The only downside on Antonio Brown is because the Bucks are just absolutely loaded everywhere. So the burn and the distribu distrib distribution of burn and all that, Antonio Brown might not be getting that many targets per game. All right, we had Jarvis Landry go 94th overall. Uh, but wide receivers, Kenny Galladay. Like I said, I want to believe in Kenny Galladay. But once again, another kind of loaded offensive wide receiver roster. We have Ryan Tannehill going 95th overall. But Kenny Galladay with this Giants team is definitely their best choice. But but they have a star-studded cast around them at the running back position, the tight ends, the wide receiver. So once again, the distribution of burn right here may be small for Kenny Galladay. And he's not kind of you know selling himself. He We just read the quote earlier this this week, or yeah, earlier this week on the show, saying, "Hey, we may get out to a slow start," and that's nothing I want on my team. I don't want no pessimist on my team. No way, no way. Uh, so I don't know if we can get uh, Kenny Galladay here. Uh, we get uh, Michael Gallup, DJ Chark, Will Fuller. He's suspended for the first game, but once again, he's going to be kind of the Dolphins' number one wide receiver next to Jalen Waddle. Solid pickup right there. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. Now, this is a real solid pick, especially, and this is actually who we are going to go after. We are going to go after Michael Pittman Jr. here in four picks. Is this an overreach? Should we wait one more round to get our man? Or, oh, 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 uh, oh, 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 okay, there's two players that I really want that sh we may be able to p put off a little bit. But we have like 14 picks until our next pick after round nine. So we have to either get Michael Pittman Jr. or Jalen Waddle. And I'll tell you why. Michael Pittman Jr., wide receiver for this Colts team. We're expecting big things from the Colts. And... T.Y. Hilton is going to miss probably the first three games, first three weeks. So Michael Pittman gets kind of the number one role, gets into a nice rhythm, gets into a nice kind of a throwing rhythm with Carson Wentz. And then when T.Y. Hilton comes back, T.Y. Hilton slides back to the number one. Michael Pittman Jr. goes back to the number two. But him and Carson Wentz have already built this uh, rapport with each other. So they'll go and get it done um, with him being the number two. We have Jamar Chase getting 98th overall. I don't think that's a great pick. Then we have Dallas Guy. Goddard tight end going 99th overall. Then we have Jalen Hurts going 100th overall here. So who do we go? Michael Pittman Jr. for the Colts or Jalen Waddle, nice shifty wide receiver. And we've been seeing great things out of Jalen Waddle here in preseason. And I think his upside is absolutely ginormous. And, you know, we've seen some rookies getting taken off the board. A lot of people betting on them. And it's our time to bet on some rookies. Jalen Waddle, welcome to the Takes by Fans fantasy team. We're taking our man, Jalen Waddle. Get it done, young gun. Get it done. Jalen Waddle, welcome. I really want Michael Pittman Jr. too as well, folks. I really want them both, but we've got 14 picks now that we have to wait, and I don't know if Jalen Waddle, Jalen Waddle may have been on the board. I'm assuming Michael Pittman Jr. is definitely going to get swallowed up here, and look at this. Michael Thomas goes 102 overall, and yeah, why not? He's going to miss the first couple of weeks, uh, first six, seven games here, coming back after the bye most likely here, but if you get him for the playoffs... That's a great pickup right there. Kind of forgot about him, honestly. And it's bad on our part. But I still like Jalen Waddle. Give me Jalen Waddle. I'll take Jalen Waddle over Michael Thomas. Ugh, ugh. Hopefully people don't know about Michael Pittman Jr.
Uh, he's not kind of one of these names that is always in the media. He kind of gets forget about. I don't know if a lot of people know about him. We try to advertise him a lot in our show. We're big fans about this man, and we're looking for an explosive. I think year three. I think he is going into year three. Let's get his um, career sets up quickly since we've been gushing about this man. All right, Michael Pittman Jr. going into his, oh, no, only second year. 503 yards last season, 65% catch percentage. Fantastic. Love it. And that's great for a rookie year when it was kind of Phillip Rivers, who, you know, doesn't take always, you know, the deep routes. And here we go. Michael Mike Kosicki goes 103rd overall. Then we get Antonio Brown going 104th overall. So we may be able to get Michael Pittman Jr. knocking on some wood here. We still have 11 picks to go, but I think that's what we're going to go with. And then after we get that, I think we take a defense. Let's get the cream of the crop defensively. And then let's just kind of start building on our bench a little bit more. Maybe we'll pick up a backup quarterback. But then at this time, we'll have four wide receivers deep. We'll have three running backs deep. And we'll have two tight ends deep. I think that's real solid. And then we'll go get our defense here. So... Round 10, we try to shore up our wide receiver. Round 11, we get our defense. And then for the remaining seven rounds, we just shore up our depth. Uh, but here we go. Uh, people are already taking defenses out here. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams defense went first overall, 105th. Uh, and that's fantastic. Absolutely got to take that. Then we get James Conner coming off the board at 106. Then we got Sony Michelle coming off the board at 107. And I love that Sony Michelle pick. Should be real solid out here now that he is kind of the second running back here for the Rams. All right. We got Zach Moss getting taken 108th overall. Then we have Tam is Isn't Devin Singletary still on the board? And you take Zach Moss over Devin Singletary? Is this correct? Or did I miss it and Devin Singletary got taken off the board? Seems like Devin Singletary was taken. Okay. Okay. I was going to say. <laughs> We're going to look to pick up Ramondre Stevenson late, late, late in the draft after kind of, you know, we show, you know when we're just looking at the depth right there. Obviously, uh, there's some good upside potential. He's been getting it done in the preseason, and we're loving what we're seeing. Uh, so we got A.J. Dillon getting taken 110th overall. We have the Tampa Bay defense getting taken. We have the San Francisco's defense getting taken. So, yeah, we're going to go with Michael Pittman Jr. here in round number 10. And then uh, after eight picks, we'll go and get our, defend, our defense that we have to start looking at. So let's go to team defense, start kind of plotting that. If Michael Pittman Jr. gets taken in the next four picks and we can't get him, then we will bump up our defense and get a wide receiver in uh, round number 10, 11. Um, so here we go. Defense is still left our Washington. I think that's a real solid option. We may go with that, truly. Um, that was a great defense all year last year. Baltimore defense. Ooh, we may get Baltimore's defense as well, as well. So there's still two good defenses out here. Uh, Pittsburgh's defense should be good. I don't think it's going to be as good as it was last season. Uh, Denver's defense should be real solid as well. They didn't put up a lot of fantasy points, but it's still an overall decent defense. Uh, what else we, can we believe in Billy B? Somebody chooses Trevor Lawrence, uh, 112th overall. So we still have two good defenses that we can choose from. Uh, Buffalo's defense should be solid. Maybe another option. The Colts defense overall should be solid out here. Um, Washington defense was taken. All right. Yeah, we get it. We get it. We get it. All right. All right. <laughs> um, all righty. What else do we get here? All right. We got two more picks before we may try and get Michael Pittman Jr. Is that the right option? Should we get a defense now? Should we re reorder our order now that everybody's kind of going for defenses? We really want to get a good one. Baltimore's a real solid one. Let's see what these next two picks do, and then we'll get a clearer understanding of what we really need to do right here. We could believe on Miami Dolphins defense too, and that's another solid one, so we may be able to wait. That's what I'm saying. We may be able to wait. Really want Michael, Pitt Michael Pittman on this team. Uh, we get the Denver's defense going 114th overall. One more pick. One more pick, and we are believers in two more defenses. Uh, Devin White. Line oh, hey, we can get defensive players? I didn't know that. <laughs> I guess I should have studied our, our scoring and roster. Um, okay, so we can get individual defenders. Jeez Louise. Um, well, that throws a wrench in everything. Um, mm, mm, mm. All right, but... We're just going to go and get our man, Michael Pittman Jr. We're big believers in this man. We're expecting big things from him. Michael Pittman Jr., welcome to the Takes by Fans fantasy team. 
All right, now let's go back to these defenses and keep our fingers crossed here. Keep our big old fingers, big old cross here. They take the Pittsburgh defense. So we like Baltimore's defense. I think that's who we're going to go with. And then if we can't get that, we're going to go with Miami's defense. Brian Flores, defensive-minded head coach, great defenders everywhere. Xavier Howard, hey, uh, you know, holding out but then got re-signed, you know, renegotiated his deal. So we're expecting big, big, big things. Now he's got to live up to everything that he's done. So we're going to kind of rely heavily on him. All right, what else do we get? Who else is picking here? Still got the Pittsburgh defense. That was the last pick taken. Still two good defenses on the board. And then we'll start looking at our defensive players now that we know that. Um, what uh, What is our team looking like? What do, we, what do we got? How many defensive? We got two defensive players we can choose individually. All right. All right, two defenses, two defenders, one defense. All right, uh, defenses, uh, defenders, I'm taking Tyron Matthew, and I'm taking Aaron Donald. Can we take Aaron Donald? Is that a good thing to take? <laughs> I don't even know how I should be taking single defenders. This is the first time I've ever had this. Uh, Kenny Galladay goes 119th overall. A little bit of a question mark in our book, and I'm glad that we took Michael Pittman Jr. now that people are you know, back to taking wide receivers and all that. So I am... I am confident in our Michael Pittman Jr. pick in round number 10. I think that's real solid right there. All right, just looking at these defensive players, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Tay Crowder for the Giants gave up, uh, put up 68 fan point, fantasy points. Jeremy Chin, safety, put up 128. I want to see what Tyron Matthews doing. Um, since these safeties are kind of going buck wild a little bit, maybe we go with a Jamal Adams, another solid pick right there. Miles Garrett put up 101. We got uh, TJ Watt going defensively. That's a real solid pickup. I'll give him that. Love some TJ Watt right there. All right. All right. What else do we get? Any good defensive players out here putting up the big points? We got uh, Cameron Jordan. Yeah. All right. Now we definitely got to pick. Is everybody forgetting about Aaron Donald or did this man just not put in that much work? 104 fantasy points. Oh, yeah. We definitely got to get that, man. Do we skip? Do we skip the team defense and go with Aaron Donald first? Interesting. And then we're going to take our team defense first. Let's get 11 players instead of one individual. You know what I mean? Know what I mean? All righty. We are four picks away from picking our defense. Do we go with Miami over Baltimore? I think we're going to take Miami over Baltimore. Watch out for Miami to be sneaky good this season. Um, so we'll, we'll take Miami's defense over Baltimore. And then, you know, obviously we'll take the, the whichever one is left. Uh, Darius Leonard goes 121st overall. Linebacker for the Colts. Another solid option right there. The bad thing is, after we choose our defense, we have big time wait between before we can pick our next player. So, defenders are going to start flying off the board. I don't think we're going to be able to get Aaron Donald, but we have to get our team defense uh, picked here. We can't go another 14 picks. All right, we get Will Fuller getting taken 122nd overall. Tyler Boyd 123rd overall. Once again, why we chose Michael Pittman Jr. We can still get our defense too. We can have both. We can have our grapes and eat them too. Hopefully, there's one more person left. So let's not knock out. We, we, well, let's not go. Well, let's not get out of ourselves here quickly. All right, come on, come on. Give us our defense. Come on, come on. 30 seconds left, and he chooses Michael Carter for the Jets. So we're going to take our Dolphins defense right here. Big believers. Hey, um, Xavier Howard, you're putting up this big stink. Hey, you deserve all this money. You got it. You got the renegotiated deal. After you just got the renegotiated deal, now it's time to put up or shut up, and we're, putting, we're risking it all on you. We're going Miami Dolphins defense. Miami Dolphins defense, welcome to the Takes by Fans fantasy team. All righty. Now that we have all that short, short off, folks, we really are going to have to start taking some defenders. I didn't even know that was the case, but we are going to have to get it. And we get Nehem Hines going 126 overall. Real interesting there. Third kind of option there for the Colts, but okay. Uh, you know, what else do we got? What's left here? Teddy Bridgewater goes, wow, 127th overall. Solid. Okay, okay. Um, I like the faith in the Teddy B to get it done. Uh, we have David Johnson, we have Tony Pollard, we have Philip Lindsay left, um, James White left, uh, Ramondre Stevenson is still left. We have so many players we want to get. Damn. Uh, we have Marvin Jones Jr. going 128th overall. Ramondre Stevenson, folks. Ooh, ooh, when can we factor him in? Maybe we get one defender in round 12, and then we go to Ramondre Stevenson in round 13. 
is that possible? I really want him on my squad. I want him on my squad. But maybe people don't even know about him. I don't want to overreach for Madre Stevenson. I still want him on our team. I don't want to overreach. All right, we got some players drafted here. We got Marquez Callaway going 129th overall. Marquise Brown going 130th overall. And that man fell. Damn, that man fell. Um, and then Miko Harmon, 131st overall. All right. We are eight picks away. So I think we're going to get Aaron Donald on the de uh, on our defensive players. Is that good? I mean, I don't know. I've never picked the defensive players in fantasy, so I'm a little out of my element here um, on that. I'm surprised he hasn't already gone, but he's gotten the most fantasy points last season. As we just kind of quickly see, he's kind of at 100, and that's real good. Miles Garrett, another edge rusher, getting 101. I would maybe stay away from Miles Garrett just because they brought in uh, Jadavion Clowney, so maybe some, you know, getting, you know, some distribution of burn uh, have that we've been saying all day. Um, all right, some other players taken. We've got DJ Chark Jr. taking 132nd. Nelson Aguilar taking 133rd. And then Russell Gage uh, taking 134th. And then Jameis Winston taking 135th. Look at this man. That's a real solid pickup. That man fell. I love this Jameis Winston pick at 135. Um, you know, big upside. 5,000 yard throwing season. He was making it work in preseason. We also, uh, who was it? Um, something, um, Marquez Callaway, I mean, bomb after bomb to that man. That's a great pickup by Jameis Winston. I love that. Uh, we got Isaiah Simmons going 136 overall. That's another great defensive pickup right there. All right, so I think we're going to go with Aaron Donald. <laughs> am, I, am I crazy? Should I not be doing this? I think I am. <laughs> I'm going to do it if he's still there. We got four, uh, three more picks before we pick. Just real interesting that he's not taken yet. All right. Yeah, let's did he he didn't get picked up, right? I'm not bugging. Aaron Donald. Yeah, he put up 104 fantasy points. What the hell is going on with that? We have Sterling Shepard going 137th overall. All right. Come on, two more picks. Crossing our fingers, knock on wood, give us our man. Give us our man. Two more picks. Tick, 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 tick. Tick, 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 tick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, AD. Uh, okay, this man's taking forever to pick. The suspense is killing me. We need two more picks that are not our man. Let's see if we can get it. We've had two people sniped from us so far today. Not great. Kyle Pitts. Who was the second one? I'm still upset about the Kyle Pitts one. I can't even think about that. I can't even think of the, about the second one correctly. Jeez. Ugh. Ugh. That one hurt. That one hurt. All right. We have Justin Tucker. People are picking kickers. Y'all are picking kickers before your defenders. Do we even yeah, do we start these defenders, right? We must. Why use a defend, defensive player if you can't even pick them, right? All right, one more pick. One more pick. Do not pick our man. One more pick. Do not pick our man. One more pick. Do not pick our man. We'll get kickers later. We're not too worried about a kicker, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? If we lose by a kicker, we lose by a kicker. But, you know, I'm not going to prioritize a kicker. We're going to get this defensive player, and they go with Tyrell Williams. And we're just going to go and get our man Aaron Donald. Let's go get him. He put up 140, 104 fantasy points last season, folks. I mean, not a lot of defenders individually are putting up that many points. So we're going to take AD, folks, Aaron Donald. All righty. Now we are picking back again in eight picks. What do we want? What do we want? Do we get a kicker? Do we solidify our kicker? Michael Gallup goes 141st overall. We get Joe Burrow going 142nd overall. Janu Smith, the tight end for the New England Patriots, a solid option right here on reserve. We do have two tight ends. I don't know if I want to go with more than two. Um, what else do you get? Anybody else that we were? Oh, Cole Komet. This is a real interesting choice right here. I'm loving what I'm seeing from Cole Komet. 
another option I may want to snipe real late in the draft with Ramondre Stevenson. Cole Komet going into his second year, a real solid year, year one, but he's 6'6", only 243 yards, but once again, once kind of Justin Fields get in, gets into the mix here at the starting quarterback for the Bears, the safety net, the dump off to Cole Komet, and I do believe he is the starting court, uh, starting tight end now. Let's bring up their depth chart quickly. He's got to be the starter. And I also believe he went to tight end university. So he's checking all the boxes here for us. Uh, Cole Komet is the starting tight end. Um, who just got picked? We had Gerald Everett, tight end, get taken 143rd overall. But uh, let's double check tight end university, making sure Cole Komet went there. I'm almost certain he did. So here we go, scrolling on the tight end university list, and here he is, Cole Komet, gotta love it. So it's a solid option right here, don't want to overreach for him, but still on our list, definitely. Ugh, ugh, only one person took a kicker, so I don't want to prioritize a kicker. Do we fill up our defensive spots first in round number 13? Ugh, decisions, man, decisions, it's tough, man, jeez. Um... Alrighty, what else do we get? I mean, there's nobody screaming off the board for us. We're just kind of all the players ranked here in their order. We're naming them off. We get Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, David Johnson, John New Smith, Tony Pollard. Baltimore defense just went to, uh, 144th overall. We get Jacoby Myers, Philip Lindsay, Alexander Madison, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Trey Lance, James White, Justin Fields, Elijah Moore, Ben Roethlisberger, J.D. McKissick, Giovanni Bernard, Evan Ingram, Hunter Henry, Carlos Hyde, Tua Tagovailoa, Daniel Jones, Zach Ertz, and Zach Ertz is another option. So yeah, we're not going to overreach on a tight end with Cole Komet right here. Zach Ertz, now he's down 100% for this Eagles team. Uh, everything's been made up. We just talked about it last week on the show. Zach Ertz is now 100% buying into this Eagles team. So this is a good choice here. We don't have to take a tight end anymore. We don't have to get him. There's two good ones left on the board that we will be fine with if we want to get go that route of just tight end depth. All right, we get Derek Carr taking 145th overall. Well, let's go back to see if we're missing anything else here. So we left off on Zach, Zach Ertz. We get Cole Beasley, Jared Cook, Devontae Parker, Blake Jarwin, Henry, Henry Ruggs, Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson, Rashad Penny. Uh, we had... Raquan Smith just go 146 overall. Ryan Suckup go 147th overall, and then David Johnson go 148th overall. Alrighty, now shoot, I think we're gonna go and finish up our defense here. Jamal Adams, let's go get this man signed, happy, ready to rock. I say we get him, but I want to check two other safeties real quick. So Jamal Adams put up 120 fantasy points last season. I want to check our man. Um. Tyron Matthew, we are big believers in him. He had 92 fantasy points. So I think I'm going to go with Jamal Adams. He's got high sack ability. He had like nine sacks last season. Um, eight, yeah, nine and a half. So, I mean, this man gets it done. And he can get some interceptions. That's not really his game since he is, you know, in the box and sacking. So I'm going to take Jamal Adams on our defense too, folks. Let's get him signed sealed for our team. Jamal Adams, welcome to the Takes by Fans family. Alrighty, so we are only just missing a kicker, and then our starting roster is all good, and we can focus on building our bench a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I love it. Buda Baker goes. Very well done. Very well done. Buda Baker, 150, 50th taken overall. I want to see, what did he do fantasy-wise last season? 133. Maybe we made a little bit of a mistake there. Jamal Adams, only 120, but another real solid option right there, Buda Baker. All right, um, we get Fred Werner uh, going 150. 51st overall at the linebacker position for the defense. Alrighty. Do we do a kicker? So we have 12 picks before 11 picks. Now Tevin Coleman goes running back uh, 152nd. Then we get Patrick McQueen, linebacker, goes 153rd overall. Then we get Hunter Henry taken off the board. So once again, our two tight ends that we are still kind of planning to potentially take in our depth are still up there. Then we get Trey Lance going 155th overall. Good. I mean, yeah, why not take that? Um, but He's never going to have like a full game to himself, it really seems like. It's going to be kind of a two-quarterback approach, so I don't love the pick there. Zach Cunningham goes 156 overall linebacker. All right, let's see what we got with our kickers. Let's uh, see if maybe we, um, maybe we um, just shore that up a little bit. So here we go. I think there's only been one kicker taken off the board, so we'll take a kicker here in round 14. 
And then round 15, where we only have to wait eight picks, we will just take our best overall rated backup, whether it's Ramondre Stevenson, Cole Komet, another defensive player, potentially a Tyron Matthews, something esque like that, or maybe even Xavier Howard. We'll see what he can do. Uh, you know, led the league in interceptions last season. Eh, just got paid. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about, folks? Come on. All right, uh, we had Carlos Hyde just go 157th. But for kickers, should we go with Young Way Koo? Buffalo's defense was just taken off the board. Eric Kendricks was just taken off the board at 159th. So Young Way Koo for the Falcons. That's something that um, uh, the, uh, the Falcons had kind of trouble with. Uh, last season, just kind of getting into the end zone, they had to kind of settle for a couple of field goals. Uh, you know, he was banging them through. It was looking good. He made eight from 50-plus. Absolute freaking monster out there. Jason Sanders also made eight from 50-plus. Gotta love it. We had Harrison Butker just get taken 150, 160th overall. Devontae Parker goes 161. Two picks away, but I think we're going to kind of lock in on Young Way Koo right here. Um, or maybe do we go with um, I, ooh, 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 Jason or my, yeah, Jason Sanders? Uh, another solid option right there. Uh, how many times are the Dolphins going to get into the end zone this season? Probably a lot. <laughs> right, we're assuming a lot. Um, yeah, Young Way Koo, interesting. Anybody else banging at home from 50-plus? Oh, my God, Brandon McManus still got it going on. 10 from 50-plus. Jeez, jeez. All right, we just had Mark Ingram uh, get taken 162nd overall for the Houston Texans. We got one more pick before we choose our kicker. I believe we are going to go with Young Way Koo. Jason Sanders is the backup if needed, if this man snipes him from us. Anybody else doing good from 50 plus? Who's this man? Stephen, yeah, Stefan uh, Stefan Gaskowski for the Patriot or for the Tennessee Titans now. Uh, seven from 50 plus. But we're gonna take our man, Young Way Koo, getting it done. Love the man. I see what he's projected. Is he highest projected here, kicker? He's projected to only make 4.3 from 50. Come on, don't disrespect the man. The man just made 8 to last season. Come on, give the man some respect. All right, we had Philip Lindsay taking 163rd overall. Are we overreaching on the kicker? I don't know, but I want to show up our off or just our starting lineup. Young Way Koo, welcome to the tight end university. Uh, takes by fans, draft family. Alrighty, now that we have all of our starters, we just have to start building our depth. We already are kind of two wide receiver deep at uh, Jalen Waddell and Michael Pittman Jr. Um, we can put them in the starting lineup too in our flex spots. Um, we have Tyler Higby tight end in our flex spot. We have Miles Gaskin in our running back slash wide receiver uh, flex spot. So we still have some you know workability around there. Um, Alrighty, but let's just go to all players. Should we, let's see who's going. Tyler Bass, kickers are getting taken off the board now. So I think we made the right decision choosing our kicker there. Um, I believe we were the second person to choose a kicker. Now we're going Cole Holcomb, uh, linebacker for Washington. But we already got our two star, we've got our defenders. I don't know if I'm going to kind of put that much weight in single defenders here. Single defensive players, especially on our bench. Um... Oh, no, Ramondre Stevenson. Well done. 167th overall. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. We missed out on our man, Ramondre Stevenson. Now, do we only have – we have three running backs. We have four wide receivers. We have two tight ends. I think I'm going to go with Cole Komet here. I think we're going to go and get him. Um, and then maybe shore up uh, another backup quarterback our next time. I'm not worried about um, Matthew Stafford not getting the job done or anything like that. What quarterbacks are left? I'll take two. I've got no problems taking two, honestly. Um, and I think we can snipe them up a little bit. Maybe we do take two. Uh, Who's going to go first, Tua or Cole Komet? That's really the, the the biggest question here. But we can also believe in Zach Ertz, though. Maybe we can get him. So if Cole Komet does go, so maybe we do get Tua. Uh, we got Calais Campbell going 168th overall. Who do we want to go with? Can only start one. What what uh, what buy is the Dolphins on? I know they are big time, uh, real late, uh, 14th. So, you know, we, our two quarterbacks aren't going to be on the same um, – on the same bye, which is always great. Hmm, 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 hmm. 
Interesting, interesting. What do we do, folks? What the heck do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We'll see what happens. We got to four more picks. We'll see what kind of the uh, the trend is. Maybe I take two as a backup. We got Jalen Waddle though. Is that a good thing though? Cole Komet though. Cole Komet. I'm expecting big things from the man. Expecting big things from the man. All right, we got Greg Zerline kicker going 169 overall. We've got four more picks. Is that correct? We got four more picks. So one, two, three. Okay, so now that, yeah, this puts it better in perspective. We got four more picks. What do we want to shore up our depth wise with four more picks? A backup quarterback, a, f a third tight end, a third defender. And then we've got uh, three running backs and four wide receivers. So another running back or wide receiver. Ramondre Stevenson was going to be your pick. He got taken, though. So I think that's how we want to go about it. A backup quarterback, a backup tight end, a backup defender, and then either a running back or a wide receiver who is ever left. And we get Derwin James getting taken 170th overall. We get Cleveland defense getting taken 171st overall here. I think I'm going to go with Cole K uh, uh, I'm going to go with Tua and then Cole Komet. I'm going to hope Cole Komet is still there. But I want to go with Tua. Unless he was... Was he sniped from me? When did Tua get taken? Am I bugging? Why do I... I don't see him anymore. I can go to quarterbacks. Um, all right. And then we had a Tay Crowder taken. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'm going to take Tua. I'm going to take Tua. If the man gets it done, if the man blossoms like I'm assuming he does... We've got no problem putting him in the starting lineup. So we're going to go with Tua. 173rd overall. We're drafting Tua. Backup quarterback. So now we're all good with quarterbacks. We're not taking another one. Um, all righty. All righty. Now we're going to go after Cole Komet. We've got 13 picks. Anthony Fersker. Ooh, that's a solid option, tight end-wise. Uh, 174th overall. He went to tight end university. Then we had Levante David going 175th. And then we had Blake Martinez going 176. Uh, so we're still in the running for our man, Cole Komet. If he, do, if he gets picked up, we're going to go with Zach Ertz, I believe, um, at the tight end position. Let's see what all these tight ends are left. Uh, we got Janus. Ooh, we may go with Janus Smith if Cole Komets gets picked up. Uh, so we got Janus Smith, Cole Komet, Evan Ingram, Zach Ertz, Jared Cook, Blake Jarwin, Randall Cobb just went 177th overall, Jordan Poyer went 178th overall. Yeah, so we are kind of uh, going a little bit light here on the tight ends. There are still some, some good ones. I mean, John Smith, Cole Komet, Evan Ingram, Zach Ertz, Jared Cook, those are all solid serviceable options out here. So um, still some good options out here at tight end. So we can shore it up a little bit. But I really want Cole Komet. I'm expecting big things out of this man this year. Jonu Smith is a great option just because, you know, safety blanket for Mac Jones at the tight end position. Unfortunately, they do have two tight ends. So who's going to be kind of the main receiver while the other one's to blocking? Is it going to be Jonu Smith or um, Hunter Henry? They have them both. Uh, let me make sure I'm um, getting the – I know it's definitely Jonu Smith. I'm almost certain it's Hunter Henry. I'm like 99% certain. Let's get that up quickly. Let's get up their depth chart. Do they have three tight ends? Are they three deep? Let's see. Uh, Patriots tight ends depth chart right here. We got John Smith, Hunter Henry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Hunter Henry is number two. Um, so, John Smith, interesting. And Hunter Henry went before John Smith. So, interesting, interesting there. Zach Ertz gets picked up right there. That's a huge, great pick right there. Smart pick at 179. I give him credit for that. All right. Eight picks away. <coughs> Eight picks away now. Uh, they go Brandon McManus, 180th overall kicker. I'm not going to take a backup kicker. I will swallow. I will, you know, on my uh, bye number six, week six, I will swallow not having a kicker. I do not mind on that. That's usually how I play it. I'm not, I'm not taking two kickers. There's no reason to take two kickers. Um, I will live and die by just having an absent spot that week. I've got no problem with that. Um, no two kickers will ever be on my roster simultaneously. Never, never, never. All right, <clears throat> seven picks away from our man, Kermit the Comet. 
Alrighty. Any good players left that we are kind of forgetting? Let's kind of scroll decently deep into this list just to see if there's any rookies that we are that we may be forgetting about. Any great players that we may be forgetting about. Uh, Kirk Cousins goes 181st overall. So let's just see who we got. Rondell Moore, solid option right here. Uh, since he is the rookie. Uh, we have Shaquille Brett Barrett going 182nd overall. We have Bobby Wagner going 183rd overall. Uh, what else do we got here? We got Latavius Murray, Rondell Moore, Justin Jackson, Tony Jones. Oh, oh, Kadarius Tony is interesting. Maybe we have Kadarius Tony in our f final flex spot. Um, wide receiver here for the Giants. Um, rookie, speedster, great talent potential. This could be an option. I, he may be my last pick. Or maybe we get him in free agency. I don't know, folks. I don't know when I should pick him up. Uh, Malcolm Brown going 184th overall. All right, three picks away, and then we're going to pick up our man. Uh, we have Jalen Smith going 185th overall. Two picks away. Come on, nobody snipe our man. Nobody snipe our man. Don't you dare snipe our man. Should we be having three tight ends on our team? We're tight end university. We'll take them all. After not getting any of the good ones that we really wanted, we'll make up in depth. <laughs> We're going to go quantity over quality here. Even though these, these are still good quantity. I, I still believe in these qualities here. All right, then we have Ty Johnson, running back, going 186 overall. All right, one more pick. Do not snipe them from me. Come on, come on, come on. Comet, follow to us, baby. And then we have Matt Ryan getting taken 170, 187th overall. So, yeah, we're taking our man, Cole Comet, the slide under the radar. This is a starting tight end of this league, folks, and he's falling right to us. Round 16, 188th pick overall, Cole Komet. Welcome to the Takes by Fans draft family. All righty. We are now eight picks away from our Round 17th pick, folks. So, we're good on tight ends. We're good on quarterbacks. We have two more spots left. Who do we want to fill in these picks with? Uh, so, we have Jacoby Myers going 189th overall. So, I want to get another defender. I want to get one more defensive player. One more defensive player out here. Who are we looking for? Who's looking good? All right, Jeremy Chin, safety for the Panthers. He put up 128 fantasy points last season. Fantastic. Um, I want to see what Xavier Howard did. Xavier Howard, where are you? Xavier Howard put up 98 fantasy points last season. All righty. Any big names defensively, individual defenders? You can start two. I want one deep on my bench. Miles Garrett, defensive end for the Browns, is always a solid option. He put up 101 fantasy points. I mean, there's not a lot of players that put up like 100 and plus, so that's kind of what we're looking for. Rodrigo Blankenship goes 191 overall. All right, what else do we get? Any other good defenders that we should be picking up? Seems to be probably Miles Garrett. Anybody good out here? What do we got? Yannick Ngankwe put up 63. He's been, he's been getting kind of passed around the league. I think he may be kind of done, unfortunately, um, of being kind of a prime time. We got J.J. Oh, do we go with J.J. Watt? I think we go with J.J. Watt. Do we go with J.J. Watt revitalizing his career? It's a solid kind of bet to kind of bet on. No. He even put up 100 fantasy points last season, which is still good. So we're going to go with J.J. Watt here in four picks if nobody picks him up. We got Jamison Crowder goes, uh, going 192nd overall. So let's keep J.J. Watt in mind. Uh, let's quickly keep scrolling here. Anybody else that we are forgetting about? Minka Fitzpatrick is another option. Chase Young. Ooh. Oh, do we go with Chase Young? Oh, there's some good ones, folks. J.J. Watt, Chase Young. Damn. Damn. Leonard Williams put up 101. We have Sammy Watkins, Sammy Watkins going 193rd overall. 
Damn. All right, I want to see what's uh, what's up with Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka Fitzpatrick put off 103. Oh, man. Oh, man. There's some good defenders out here, folks. So that's definitely... I don't see all these defenders getting taken. J.J. Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, Chase Young. So once again, just in free agency, if we need to pick him up for one week, we can't do that. Damn. Some good ones. Who do we pick? We got uh, Aaron Donald and uh, Jamal Adams, our individual defenders. Okay. Okay. All right. We're three picks away. Carson Wentz goes 194th overall, and that's a great pickup. He could be having a real great year this year, folks. Plug and play quarterback away for this Colts team. He's the quarterback. He's plugged in. We'll see if he gets it going. All right. Two picks. One defender. Or maybe since there's all these good defenders, do we just go with an Offensive player, we got James Wright going 190. James White going 195th. We're on the clock now. Brandon Wilson goes 196 overall. All right, what do we do here? We are on the clock. A minute to pick. Do we go with a wide receiver or running back, or do we go with our JJ Watt pick? Running backs, we get Marlon Mack, Tariq Cohen, Latavius Murray, Justin Jackson, Tyson Williams, Tony Jones. Uh, I did say we we're going to go with uh, Kadarius Tony, though. We are going to go with Kadarius Tony, And I don't know if anybody knows about that man. I don't know if anybody knows about that man. Or do we do Chuba Hubbard, but they've got uh, Christian McCaffrey. Ugh, ugh. All right. We're going to go with... We're going to go with J.J. Watt. Defensive edge rusher. And then we're going to go with Kadarius Tony as our very last pick. So we've got 14 picks until we pick. Hopefully our man KD can stay available. Um, he's not anywhere close to these lists here. He's very, very low because he's a rookie. He does, hasn't done anything. Hopefully nobody knows about him. He's a little bit of a sleeper for us. We're expecting big things out of him. I mean, I just want to tell you all about our man Kadarius Tony. Um Let's get up his college stats. Because Darius Tony played for Florida the last four years. 984 yards last season. I mean, fantastic. No. And then he also put up another 161 rushing. So, small. Uh, oh, he, he's six foot. Oh, damn. Okay. So, he is tall and fast. So, absolutely love it. Let's check what he did in this bowl game. Did he get it done in the bowl game here in 2020? Against Alabama in the college football playoffs. So this is uh, number one. Yeah, I believe this was the first game. They put up 46 points. They end up losing, obviously. But he put up 153 yards. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we're loving Kadarius Tony. All right, who else is everybody picking here? We got Boston Scott going 199th. We get Robbie Gould going 200th. We get A.J. Green. Oh, A.J. Green. What a – oh, my God. That's a fantastic pickup. I forgot all about A.J. Green. That is an absolute great 201st pick. Absolutely. This man's the number two wide receiver, and he could definitely get it done. Uh, he can revitalize his career here in Arizona. We are expecting it. Wow, wow, wow. What a snipe right there. That is an absolute beautiful snipe pickup. Wow, fantastic. Just missed that one. Absolutely missed that one. <sighs> All right. Nine picks away from our last pick, and then we will get out of here. We'll recap our draft and get out of here. One more pick. We're going with Kadarius Toney. Uh, that's who we want. Uh, Khalil Mack goes 203rd. Anybody else that we're just missing, that we're not thinking of, like an A.J. Green? Um, what else do we get here? We got Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Zach Wilson, um, Darius Slayton, Chuba Hubbard just went 204th, real solid option. Tyson Williams goes 205th. Christian Kirk for Arizona, not bad, but he's the third option. We get Wayne Gallman here, um, running back for the Atlanta Falcons. Salvin Ahmed, running back for the Dolphins, once again, kind of a second or third option. Eric Ebron, tight end, Jared Goff, Justice Hill, K.J. Hamler. Ooh, K.J. Hamler. That's interesting. That is interesting. That is interesting. He only had 81 fantasy points last season. Okay, we're expecting big things from him. He got it done in preseason. See if he gets a second look here in the regular season. 
get some good burn. Deshaun Jackson for the Rams. Ooh, that's another great option as well. Oh, man. If we didn't already have kind of, um, you know, Matthew Stafford, maybe Deshaun Watson, that's going to be a great hookup all season. All right, we get Will Lutz goes 206. We get Mason Crosby going 207th. Four more picks till we can pick up Kadarius Tony. Doesn't seem like we're missing anybody. We're scrolling down this list. We're really not seeing anybody um, that we're missing big time. So that's always great. All righty. So, yeah, definitely is going to seem like we are. Well, we are going to take Kadarius Tony 100%. Uh, we got Tony Pollard going 208th. We get Justin Fields going 209th. Yeah, why not? The last pick, absolutely. Get that. Get that. Uh, Cole Beasley going 210th. One more pick. I doubt this dude does Kadarius Tony, and if he does, I absolutely flip, flip out because um, there's no reason to do that. Uh, so here we go. He picks the Indianapolis Colts defense. And here we go. Kadarius Toney, welcome. The last selection here for the Takes by Fans draft. Welcome to our team. Welcome to our family. Kadarius Toney, go show out. Show us what you can do. Rookie, go get it done, kid. Kadarius Toney, welcome to our family. Alrighty, so we have completed our draft. All 18 spots have been filled, so this is what we have, folks. Our starting quarterback is Matthew Stafford. Our two wide receivers are CeeDee Lamb and Corey Davis. Our two running backs are Najee Harris, Najee Harris and Josh Jacobs. Our tight end is Mark Andrews. Our flex spot at the wide receiver tight end position is Tyler Higby. We've got Miles Gaskin. Our starting kicker is Young Way Koo. Our starting defense is Miami Dolphins. Our starting defenders individual are Aaron Donald and Jamal Adams and our bench comprises of Jalen Waddell, Michael Pittman Jr., Tua Tagovailoa, Cole Komet, J.J. Watt, and Kadarius Toney. Alrighty, folks, that is going to do it for us today. Thanks for watching and listening to our live draft. We are back live tomorrow noon Eastern, finishing up and continuing on doing our season win total projection bets can we find what that line is and see if we can find those wins above or below the line going through all the schedule so we will be back live tomorrow noon eastern thanks for tuning in thanks for watching and uh we'll see you in the next one folks